Um, I've got some stocks I'm going to look at. I've also got some, and, and if you've got stocks that you particularly want to have a shout at, uh, throw them in the Q&A box. We've got about half an hour of those. Uh, the video will go up, uh, let's say, tomorrow morning sometime, so we'll get the video up and running, and all will be good in that space there. Um, and I've got some, I'm, I'm going to go back to some of the stocks that we looked at back when we did this webcast um, for what will become obvious reasons. Just, you know, at the time when we did the initial webcast, the point was, yeah, lacquer, but you know what, there's some, there's some most definite downsides to it. So I've gone to uh, SA40 cash and where that line ends there, that point there, 2nd of November, that is the date we did the webcast. So we did it on the 1st, so it was actually slightly before so that line would have been, and at that point we drew it there. And if we go back in time, it looked like a nice line. It looked like a fairly good place to put a support. We've got one, two, three, four good touches. We've got two near touches. Um, and basically it, on that evening, on the 1st of November, I stood in, on the podium. And you remember there is our 1st of November, that green candle there. I stood there and said, yeah, hey, this thing looks like it's on support. It looks like maybe it's going to bounce. And then we got four red days in a row. And then we got some crazy days, including this one in particular, which was, uh, thank you, Mr. Donald Trump. I'm going to come to that line in a moment. But let's now take this and extend it the further all the way. I mean, short answer, and let's take that out a bit. I mean, what are we seeing there? Uh, I suppose, in truth, what we're seeing is delete that trend line. That, that trend line has no validity. I mean, it, it's just not working. Um, we're getting some support down here on these trend lines, but let's ignore those for right now. Uh, let's get them out of the equation. Delete that one. And you just click on it and then select the delete one. Short version is that trend line is beautiful, but... It's not doing anything at this point. And the problem is, is that we have such a lovely looking trend line. We are loath to delete it. We're like, no, no, look at that. All those touches. This is a, no, it's not. It's a terrible trend line, not working. Let's make it gone. Where do we put our trend line for top 40? Well, and let's take that one out the top as well. Uh, short version is trend line for top 40. This index is going down. There's your trend line for top 40. So rather looking for reasons, and that goes back to June, rather than looking for reasons to be a buyer of top 40, we should actually be saying, hang on, where do we short top 40? Um, and the easy answer is, well, when it moves higher, uh, some folks are saying, you know, why didn't you draw it across the top lines? Uh, and yes, so if I do it point to point, I could do it across there. It becomes less meaningful. Is that more meaningful because it's, although it's given, what, what we're worrying about here is that September move there, which was seemingly a break and then a back end and then seemingly a break and back end and, 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 and so and so it goes. Um, what we can also potentially put in here is a horizontal line at around about that point there. And we probably have some fancy chart pattern. But at, at the moment, the best you can be saying around this top 40 is, you know what, when it moves up to what is around a little bit higher at the end of this line here, uh, best thing we should be doing is probably shorting top 40. And, and that's the issue with it, is that nice in theory, we get majorly w uh, wedded to the trend lines um, and they cause us pain. Uh, I want to go to Aspen because that was one of the ones I pulled up. Uh, folks, what I have done... Um, Subsequent to that, so I've started a list on my Twitter account. If you go to Simon PB on Twitter, if you're on Twitter, uh, you will find I've started a list on uh, called charts. And what I'm doing with that is I'm pulling in the people who post a lot of charts with trend lines, etc. Not so much to follow them, but as a learning exercise more than anything else, so that we can get smart around what's happening and how it happens and all of that sort of thing. Um, so you can go find that there. You can, the, the, the way the lists work, you can follow the list, but also you can just independently decide who you do or don't want to follow. So this is one that came from Karen Richards that I posted in the, in, 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 in the point. It's sitting at about 300. We don't want that much data. We only want it to about there. And what we had was a nice touch, rally, come back, nice touch. And then we had the break below it. And that break below it at the time, 
again, where is 1st November? There it is. So there was where we were sitting and we were saying, yo, nice break below 300. And it was looking pretty. And then boom, boom, two massive green days. And now we're back below 300. So what do we do in a scenario like this? Remember what I did say was to bring some technical and to bring something technical and to add to it. So if we bring just a simple MACD into it, um, my MACD is green. So it was red at that point. So in truth, at that point, you would have said, look, MACD's turned, the histograms turned red. We're below that 300. Nice, simple trend line. Uh, let's get in. Let's put our stop loss. Where would you have put your stop loss? Uh, stop loss would have been probably around that level. So you were buying about 290, stop loss about 10% above you. Uh, you may, depending exactly where you put the stop loss, you may still be in that trade, uh, or you might have got stopped out by that spike. At this point, I wouldn't be looking to get in because my MACD's turned up again. My histograms turned positive. So it's saying, yeah, maybe, but not convinced. Uh, some others I quickly wanted to pull up. Uh, let's, let's grab Telcom. So zoom out a bit, give us more space. What do we got on Telcom? We've got a nice one on the top. Does it go further back? We've got that one coming across there, which has been broken. So it's a, more than anything a breakout. Remember I said, as a rule, you want to assume that support will, 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 will hold and that resistance will hold. Um, what we're seeing here is, hmm, Telcom's looking to break out. Nice support there. That is pretty much held in time. Is Telcom breaking out? Now, two things I want to throw into the, in, into the pot. The one is results from Telcom. What do results do? And I know that, that, that charts get them in the price and everything, but results change perception. In the case of Telcom, results were fairly chunky quite good looking. Uh, could we potentially say that the results have changed the outlook for, 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 for Telcom and therefore this is going to be a real breakout? What I would want to see, your MACD is saying, yep, MACD is happy, histogram, you would have preferred to buy it off that support line there, but that would have, that would have, that was results day. It would have been a brave trade, but nonetheless, it would have worked for you. Um, I would like to see it move up, come back to that support line at around 67, 66, 80, and then move off higher again. Uh, so that was Telcom. Another one I want to pull up. So initially, I'm going to go to the ones that we looked at in, in that initial video. So we can do some follow-up. We are 16 days later, uh, 12 trading days. Uh, Sassel. Sassel has had 360 as support forever and a day. Uh, we're going back to December 2015, so a year. Does it even go back further? I think that, yep, it, even back here, and back here we're sitting back in 2013. 360 for a long time has been important uh, in, 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 in Sassel's life. What we're seeing with Sassel is that it, it typically bounces off. Seemingly, there's some good activity happening at around the 360. My line is actually sitting at 365, and I don't want that. I want it properly. I oh, know, lines at the right place, or it's the price that's sitting at a, at a slightly odd place. Uh, I told you I wasn't the sharpest pencil in the shed today. So short answer to Sassel is be buying it off that 360 support. So you've had uh, three trading days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, all gave you a blush at the 360 support to buy it. Put your stop loss five or maybe even eight, ten percent below it. As always, two two percent rule to make sure that your stop loss is working properly, that your risk size is correct and the like. Um, and Sassel at, at three sixty. Do we then, however, add to it and say, what about bringing an indicator? And if you go back, if you go look at just one lap dot com slash masterclass. The very first one we did was a CFD trading plan where we incorporated weekly and daily charts and we incorporated the MACD. Now, in this case, the MACD is not confirming and that makes perfect sense. We've had one, two, three, four red days in a row and I think today is looking like a red day as well. We'll see how that ultimately pans out. Um, but in essence, what we've got here is a, a, a MACD not confirming 
on the daily chart and i can't imagine it is confirming uh terence i see your point i'll get to it in a moment i think you're spot on right uh macd on the weekly chart is confirming uh and again on the weekly chart that 360 even more aggressive now have we just fudged it have we just gone from a daily chart bouncing off 360 but the MACD not confirming. We dropped to a weekly chart and we're like, wow, hey, look at this. Everything's now in business. Short answer, yeah, we're mixing our time frames. So what we had said in that initial uh, uh, presentation on the CFD trading plan was very much a case of start in the weekly and start in the daily, which is what we did there. Start in the weekly, get your trigger. In this case, your trigger would have been there um, and then to trade the break. But you're wanting to then trade the move higher not a comeback to support. So we are mixing signals. So that doesn't massively excite me. Short answer on Sassel. If you want to go support only, then oh, today's uh, quite actually a green day. So if you want to go support only, today is a buy day for Sassel. Put your stop loss down at around the 340, 330 level. Do your 2% risk and uh, see how it goes. Oh, the, the, sorry. Uh, Terence was saying, is that there? This little bit here in island reversal. Let me bring in some, 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 some uh, ink. Is that there in island reversal? Uh, <laughs> I mean, in a true sense, it is right because what's an island reversal? We had a candle, we had a candle, we had a candle. Three candles, nice and simple. Ah, sorry, my internet's playing up with me. Um, and a big gap. That is what an island reversal looks like. Typically, however, your island, which is that individual candle sitting all by its lonesome, would be more than just one day. But certainly that was an example where with that case, you would have gone long at Sassel at around that point, around the 380 level. Uh, you would have run at your stop loss initially would have been halfway through the island. As it runs, you would have moved your stop loss a bit higher. We did reversals in the September uh, webcast. Uh, Benjamin, bright. Okay, let's do bright. Let's get it out the way. I knew it was going to come. I think it's going to be an ugly chart. Uh, and also see so the others on my list, Investec, uh, MTN, and Sassel. And then whatever you guys throw at me until such time as my voice disappears or we run out of time. So oddly enough, I actually have some trend lines in Bright. Oh, I know why, because it got called up in the webcast two weeks ago. Um, so here's Bright. Uh, let's take, so the MACD is saying, sure. What we're actually getting is Bright pretty much going sideways at the moment. We've got a consolidation. It's only about a two-week consolidation, uh, but we've got that. And if we initially drop, let's go to weekly. Yeah, the weekly is not terribly exciting. That MACD is looking ready to turn, but it might be a couple more weeks before it actually does turn. Let me zoom out my time frame on Bright. I mean, a stock that's falling. I mean, drawing a trend line, all we're going to be doing is saying the thing's falling and therefore it is. Uh, so there was a nice support there. 148 was a great support line and break, which would have been your short for when it finally broke down through it. Uh, delete that annotation. So there's a trend line I drew there. Uh, what we can then do is say, yeah, okay, so we've got this one. Uh, let's make a copy and drop it about there. We kind of got a channel. Short version, break goes lower until we see something that turns it. Uh, MACD is saying maybe. We're certainly getting a positive MACD there. Um, but from a technical perspective, there is nothing here saying buy break. I mean, if you really, really want to, now we're retrofitting, but what the heck? Let's, let's not retrofitting. We're, we're, we're forcing is what I'm looking for. Um, if you really, really want to, you can say at 95.40, there's your parallel line. Take Brett, Brett at 95.40. I think it's a high-risk trade. A breakthrough that, to my mind, is a high-risk trade. The, the, the picture on Brett is really simple right now. Let's go back to its high back there. Brett is heading down. Uh, it consolidated for a long period of time. Now it's going down. The, 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 the desire to call bottoms or tops is great. Absolutely it is. But, but trade with that big trend and accept what the big trend is telling you. Um, you can use uh, moving averages 
to tell you your direction and your moving averages are pretty much telling you the same thing. Even if I change my, my, my values there, the moving average is confirming that at the moment Brait is down. What you're looking for on Brait, frankly, is a reason to sell. So if anything, on Brait, sell that 95.40. Brait hits 95.40, sell it, expect it to go lower. Always be considering, always be assuming that a trend will continue because mostly trends continue. They pretty much carry on going. That's what trends do. And as soon as we are, are trying to force fit it into something, that's when we get ourselves into trouble. So if we say trends are, are, are continuing, then we're in biz. NASPAS is just a horrible chart. It's a beautiful chart if you own the share. Why is it a horrible chart? Look at these gaps. Man, it looks like a like a sieve that's been around since the 60s and doesn't really sieve so good anymore. The only thing you, I can find on NASPAS that looks real is that line. And I think it goes back even further in time. Nah, that's pretty much it. It goes back to about 2013. Yeah, so 2013 is where it became real. That trend line, which is massive support, which is telling you it's going up. We've had some peaks. There was a threat of a break. We've had now, if we zoom in again, more threat of a break, but this is a stock that pretty much goes higher. Yeah, and and you know, ten cent results, blah. We can touch the fundamentals. Um, I know a lot of people who have made money going long uh, Naspass. I don't know a soul who's gone short of Naspass and made money. I mean, I'm sure there must be some, but I don't know who they are. The weekly chart here is going to be even stronger. Um, come to my drawings. Come to my point to point. Uh, start it down there, run it up to there, uh, make a copy of it, stick it up about there. Trading in an upper channel. So right now you want to, you'll be looking to buy off that 2,000 rand uh, bottom of the channel, and you'd be looking to sell it as it went up to around, sorry, not yeah, uh, 2,600 or higher. BHP bulletin. Here's a chart I haven't looked at in a hundred years. I own the share in the long-term portfolio, but I don't trade uh, bulletin. So we're in the weekly chart. Nice. I like that. Let's start in the weekly chart. What are we seeing? Make no mistake. We're seeing some nice uh, solid support booging across there. If you want to get fun, we can say there was some stuff there. I hate that line. No, I'm going to delete it. Um, delete it. Try it again from maybe that point. Uh, it's not fitting anywhere pretty. Uh, um, delete that. What we have is support. We can copy it. Ah, don't change the color. Bulletins at the top of the channel on the weekly chart. Uh, short answer, it's probably going back to around 200 Rand. Uh, you buy it at around 200 and you trade it to around 240. That is a 20% uh, channel. That's that's a chunky enough. 20% channel, if you can pick up half of that, that's 10%. Mm, yeah, uh, put your stop down 10% below, so you stop at about 180. That's in the weekly. So let's drop it down to the daily chart. We're going to see a different picture in the daily chart. We've still got the same lines in place from the weekly chart. And they broadly say the same thing. Bottom line, this theory says bulletin is going back to around 200. Uh, maybe we're getting a break, but short answer, it's going probably going back to around 200. 200 would be a nice place to buy it with a move to around 240. Although by the time you get there, maybe that move is to around 250. Uh, MTN, there's MTN there. So M10 was another one trading the channel. In the daily chart, a nice strong channel going across there. Uh, we don't need to go back quite so far. We only need to go back about there. There's the M10 channel. Between about 120 and 150, M10 has been a fairly nice trade. Uh, it's a, about a 25% channel, so it's tradable. Don't try and do this on anything less than a 20% channel. It's been going along, but what happened? So we had some breaks of it. We had a fake break here. We had a fake break there, but now we have a break. Question, is this, well, frankly, it looks like a real break. What happened was it kind of broke out, came back, kind of broke out, 
went back and gave it the kiss of death. MTN is looking like it wants to go lower. And I would say to you that if I add my MACD, I bet you my histogram is looking for, yep, histogram's gone red as well. MTN short on, so you probably want to be shorting MTN at this point, taking a look for more downside, uh, putting your stop loss maybe around about uh, the 120 level. I would perhaps put it a little bit higher. Let me go to drawings. A little bit higher. Comment coming through that my stop losses are massive. Yeah, you betcha. So a couple of reasons for that. And if you go just one lap.com slash bootcamp, you'll see the video on risk. And again, on the masterclass series, when you look at the CFD one, you'll see my a stop loss on equity for me is going to be 10 ish percent. You know, for a stock to move three, four, five percent in a day or three against the primary direction um, and against the direction of your trade is entirely possible. Spits you out and off it goes again. So my view is always a case of give your stop losses a lot of space. To me, that's my preferred space to put the stop loss, about 128, which is uh, quite chunky. That's 18 rand. That's about 13%. That might be a bit rich. So maybe you come and you put it about 10%, which is about 123. So put your stop loss about there on that particular trade. MTN right now, if you want to be anywhere in it, you want to be short. Monday. Uh, Benjamin, preference? I'm going to go with LTD. They should be more or less the same. Uh, another one coming through Tongart because I, yeah, so I have been buying Tongart. Uh, oh, you wanted PLC. My bad. Um, ach, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, why won't it give me PLC? Okay, I'm being stymied by tech here. My brain is soft. So, Benjamin, if you don't mind, it, it should give broadly the same answer. PLC should track. I know it's not always perfect, but if I can do the PTY instead, uh, the local one or limited. Um, Tongard, I bought for, for, for uh, in my second tier portfolio. The expectation is a return to normal for the rain. I've been buying it around 116 to 120. It has started to run. Um, I saw it earlier today, but I didn't do it on the technical. We'll go have a look at it. So Lex first, I don't want to look at that. Lex first, go to a weekly chart. You can see some very obvious stuff here. And let's take out my MACD for now. Baba MACD. Uh, let's do some drawings. So fairly solidly horizontal support at about 260. Uh, a, I'm going to ignore that there for now, whether I should or shouldn't. So I've ignored that December year-end rally uh, back on currency weakness. The fact that it's currency weakness, and we can explain it away, is, is not my concern. I'm just saying, you know, we've, if we ignore that, we get a lot of nice points. The thing is, by ignoring those points there, what are we effectively doing is saying, well, my trend lines are nice unless I don't like them. And that's not good. Um, so Mondi, looking pretty. Oh, that didn't drop. Yeah. Um, your support has been holding it around the 260. The short version on Mondi is buy it around 260, put a stop loss, uh, 5, 8, 10% below and trade it up to around 290 or 300. Um, if you're trading it up to around 290, uh, that's only 30 Rand, which is quickly trying to do the math, 11%. You want to touch a stop loss, so probably put your stop loss at 5 or 8. Uh, question around if we bring the MACD back. Does that add anything to the party? Yeah, so the MACD is saying you were buying somewhere around, when did my histogram turn? There's my histogram. So you're buying somewhere probably on that candle there. That would have been a nice entry day. I don't know why we've got a, a long wick there, but there would have been your entry day for around about a 260 entry. Uh, Lex Boogie off to Investec. So going to Investec because all the all the tweet on Twitter is that there is a uh, ah, we've had a breakout on Investec. Um, post the results. Question: Have we? So let's go have a look. See. And I'm not being disparaging when I say all the tweets on Twitter. Um, it, it's certainly from people who are who are suitably smart enough. Uh, let's take out my my technical. I don't want my MACD. Certainly, we know it's confirming. 
So what we got here, come to my drawing line, uh, we've got a fairly horizontal support line at around about the 81-ish. Um, I'm not seeing this massive breakout that everyone's talking about. Yeah, so there's your, your channel. Again, assume it's going to stay in the channel. Um, there's your channel. So, okay, so we, today's dart is not reflecting properly. It's trading up at 92. So seemingly it's broken out of the channel. I wouldn't trade that. At this point, however, if you were trading uh, 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 Monday, you would be long because you would have got off the bottom of the channel at around 82. Um, you would have really tightened your stop loss when you get to the top of the channel, which is sitting at around 88. And I think that's an incredible, I think that channel's too tight to trade. Um, you would probably still be long in that scenario there for Investec. Anglo-American. Anglo-American's not on the home page. Fancy that, eh? Oops. Sorry, spilling water on my laptop. Um, so Anglo-American, there's a trend line there, which would seem that I drew probably again back when uh, a couple of weeks ago when we did it. Fairly obvious trend line sitting there. Your trend on Anglo-American is certainly moving higher. Uh, that we most definitely know. Question just came through now, which says, can you use trend lines to give you turning points? And I, I think not. And we went into, into the video. Let's quickly draw one uh no drawings um point to point there really was so at that point you've you've broken the uptrend but if you go look at at at, at the video i was looking at and i think it was uh, coronation um in the video it really it it's dodged to i you've i suppose you've got to take one view is do support and resistance hold or don't they and if they take it that they don't hold then it becomes a whole lot more difficult to trade. If you take it that they do hold, at this point here, yeah, you would have been looking for a short, although you would have said, you know, pulled back, kiss, maybe okay. Anglo-American trading in a bit of a trend, busted out. Is it coming back to, 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 to the support to rally again, or is it coming back down to that trend line? Uh, tough to tell, but certainly in a trend line and gently heading higher. Let's go look at Tongart, which I hope looks lovely, because as I say, I've been buying, but I, Oh God, Hewlett. So here's my Tongard Hewlett. Let's first step to a weekly chart. Let's, that gives us a nice bit of time. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. So, ooh, I hate that there. So where's that 2014? It's that, that horrible candle early 2014. Let's get rid of that. So what we certainly saw was the strong sell-off from 170 yard down to 80 yard as a result of the drought. That undoubtedly has broken. Uh, if I were putting some lines in, they're going to be point to point sort of around there. Uh, results out last week, uh, or was it, uh, sorry, results out. I can't remember if they were, I think they were this week actually, yes, that's right, which I haven't delved deeply into because I've been traveling and, and fighting flu. Sort that off, it's moving higher weekly, yeah, looking nice-ish. Uh, and that's not an exciting chart by any stretch of imagination. But I just bought it for my completely lazy Tonga, it's going to start seeing some more rain. Um, so there was your line, it didn't work in that space there. Delete that annotation. If anything, my drawings are probably best with the horizontal, telling me that at about 126 probably is a technical point to get into it. Uh, drop onto that. Let's bring my MACD into the equation. Um, Mac, and let's zoom so we can actually see what's happened with our MACD. MACD turned positive. If we can see that break uh, via that through that high we saw in, 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 in September, Tongard may be worth a bite. Uh, last one I wanted to look at, no, looked at Investec, um, and we're hitting our time. Uh, we can do one or two more if they're coming through. Uh, Spa, ah, yes, Spa's a nice idea. One of the retailers that seems to know how to make money. 
The point we made in the presentation back in early November is that it, this is highly, highly subjective, and the biggest risk to our trading is us and that we do silly things. Um, make no bones about that. We, we, we do stupid trades. We, we bring our biases to the party. And my recommendation at the time was to go and pick stocks that you know nothing about. In other words, go, go off into the international half of the IG platform and just pick random stocks that you know nothing about the fundamentals. You know, for example, SPA, we know really good results yesterday. That clouds our adjustment. Our, our, our opinion. So SPA is really quite simple. On the shorter term, I'll zoom out in a moment. We were having some support there. It got messy. We were having some resistance there. Uh, SPA has done not very much. MACD is not doing very much either. Not a heck lot happening. Let's zoom out and get a little more time for a minute. Um, looks a whole lot more ugly there. So there was a bit of a channel there. Spa's broken down. At this point, from a technical perspective, I'm not seeing anything that excites me that would want me to go jumping into it. Um, so here's what I'm suggesting is that we go off and I let's switch to my offshore platform. Uh, and let's go and where's it? Sweden, that could be fun. I'd said uh, Singapore, but I'm not seeing Singapore. So he has the shares for Sweden. Ooh, yowza, so many, I mean, it's bizarre. Um, anyway, so, you know, let's go pick a random stock starting with a K. Kesco, that looks like fun. I'm, the, the point here is we have no idea what Kesco does. I mean, it's an, OY, an OYJ. I mean, I assume that's just what they, yeah, that's what they call their, their companies there. So we got Kesco. It's an OYJ. Uh, let's get rid of that MACD for now. And what you do is when you draw the trend lines here, the, the, the system automatically saves, saves it for you. So, yeah, ugly-ish stock. But certainly been moving. Um, just didn't trade for a whole period there. I don't know. Maybe that took a holiday or something. I ah, don't know. Ah, love it. Don't know a single thing about this. There was your initial yeah, getting faster, higher, harder. Uh, there's another. Not seeing much there. This is, you know, bad one. Delete it. Go find one that did look a bit better. And go through and find yourself. Let's try cone. Because I'm assuming that they make ice creams, right? Although, no. Scandinavia, no one eats ice cream in Scandinavia. But you get the point of what I'm doing here is I'm just, you know what's surprising me about these is, is, is the Wix. It's, it's, I haven't, so, so we're getting fairly big intraday volatility and this would seem to be a, a, a function of, of, of the market. We're getting fairly big intraday volatility, um, but it's not following through to, to, to actually coming through to the closes. So, so Finland seems to be volatile in the days and then not in the rest. We're in a weekly. In your weekly, there's a fairly obvious place to draw. And you've just bounced off it, but that was only your third point. So now you have a solid line there. Let's copy it. Let's move that up to there. There is your range for the ice cream folks, assuming that they make ice cream. What else would you make with a name like that? Drop to our daily. Do we see the same picture in the daily? Uh, broadly, we are, yeah, I would probably also move one up to about there. Um, I like the buys off there. The stock might have been worth, <coughs> excuse me, buy at about that point. If we draw the trend lines, we come back in a week, a month. We keep on coming back to those stocks that we know absolutely nothing about where we're just looking. Finland might be an issue with those candles. So maybe we go and take Italy or, or something like that. But you get the point I'm talking about in that space there. Ladies and gents, uh, we will park it. Thank you very much for your time. Remember, our next uh, masterclass video is on 6 December. It's a Tuesday. It's live, 6 o'clock at IG. Uh, if you're not in, in Santon, if you're not in Joburg, then uh, hit the webcast. And that is going to be using my lazy system for FX and index trading. Um, and the lazy system works great on that. Ladies and gents, everyone, have a great day further. Cheers all.